Welcome back, I'm Tedward, that's the Topher, and this is the key to a Lamborghini Huracan Technica! This is the more street-focused version of the STO. So, we're gonna do a little bit of a living with the Technica video today, because we're gonna do something hardcore with it, of course. Our driveway is looking a pretty choice. I think we've got about a million dollars worth of cars here right now. And to anybody else looking at this driveway, they're like, wow, dream come true. And all we're thinking is like, holy cow, this is a lot of work. <laughs> We've got to review every one of these cars in a very limited amount of time. And because they're such great cars, we need to make them good videos. So we're doing our best, but this Lamborghini 5.2 liter V10 makes it pretty easy. So the Technica has a leg up on the Evo rear wheel drive because it's got better aero, but it has a leg up as a street car in comparison to the STO because it actually has some space. You can open this frunk with the key, luckily. Hello, Charlie of the Daily Motor. See, you can tell this, this morning's just going bizarre. But look, we've got enough of a frunk in here to put a few things if this was some sort of like Aventador Roadster, this is a big problem because then you end up putting the roof in here and, and that's no fun and you don't have any space. Yeah, we had the STO for all of an hour and a half and this is much more practical. Yeah, the ST... Holes in that one. This is an expensive option too because this is a carbon fiber bonnet. Just to show off to all your friends, when you go to the grocery store, they're not impressed by this Lamborghini, but they will be impressed by <laughs> this carbon fiber bonnet, which is lovely. The front of the car, looks insane with all the new bodywork. Now, this is all subjective. I know some people aren't a huge fan of the styling of the Technica, but I think it's pretty fun. Inside, we've got these absurdly stiff carbon fiber seats, and oh my goodness, they move. These are not fixed buckets like we have in the GT4 RS, and you can kind of tilt this up and down as you need. Right here, moves the seat forward and back, and in typical Lamborghini fashion, it's very hard. Everything is a little bit painful. Don't hit your head on things in here. But all the touch points are very soft because we have Alcantara everywhere. Now, let's get out and drive because this is such a good car and we want to find out if it's usable in LA traffic. Now that I've unceremoniously gotten my way into this car, I've hurt my knee hiking in Sedona. I know, poor me, right? But it's actually been a little bit tricky getting into some of these low cars. So I'm learning what it's like to be a little older trying to get in and out of these things, but Motrin helps. All right, it's always a sense of occasion getting in these. And I love that this is a manual carbon seat because I just want to be able to quickly move things around. And man, it just puts you in the perfect seating position immediately. We still have the typical Huracan limitations when it comes to visibility because mid-engine rear quarter visibility is always low. This one does have the new screen, which is very strange to me. I've driven a lot of Lamborghinis, a lot of Aventadors, a lot of Huracans, and this is the first time I've seen this new screen. The thing that frustrates me about this car and has always frustrated me about this car is the touch points on these buttons. These should be aluminum. They're like kind of cheapo plastic. I mean, maybe they are aluminum and they, no, they can't be. They can't be. It's got to be. Um, it's, it's just frustrating because this is like a $325,000 car and I want these to feel like really honed in and bespoke. That's something that like hyper cars do really well and I understand that cost limitations exist. The other thing is though like these buttons, these feel cheap too and that's annoying but none of it matters because this car sounds absurd. You're buying it so you can still have a naturally aspirated V10. So let's get it started and go for a drive. <laughs> it's a pretty good day. Oh, oh, love it. Sure, we'll proceed. We've got our nose lift up. That is always critically important in these cars. And we're going to try to get our way out of the driveway and then we'll go for a drive on the street. Always a little concerned about that front end. We've still got the nose lift up because we're kind of in this little neighborhood. It will go down at a certain speed and then we don't have to worry too, too much. But 
supercar life is all about not scraping and curving and all that kind of junk and that's always frustrating there's a level of anxiety that comes with just driving a car that's worth that this much and the wheels alone the optional wheels that are on this car are ten thousand eight hundred dollars extra extra it, it's pretty bonkers so it's easy to spend a ton of money we're in oh my goodness people just running red lights and stop signs that's the stuff man that's what gets you like really freaked out about these cars it looks like we found our friend there's the Topher in the MC20 and then here's substitute Topher in a 4RS now driving it around normally in town isn't so bad especially if we put it in strata mode street mode it's actually pretty quiet and subdued it's nothing outrageous it's really easy and the way that this typically, I'm gonna go nice and slow over this. See, this is that supercar life. You could say your car is 631 horsepower, but a Mitsubishi doesn't have to slow down for that. Gotta get used to the directionals, but that's old school. I mean, they've been doing this on the Oricon for ages, but it's on your thumb over here. But the ride quality, it's stiff. I mean, look, this is the streetable version of the STO, which is the streetable race car. So it's a little bit softer, but there's nothing like soft edged about this car until you compare it to a full blown race car. It absolutely feels bonkers all the time. Ooh, did you see that? shifting this is a good time also because you don't always need all the power this is rear wheel drive it's not quite as frenetic and nervous as that Maserati MC20 they have about the same amount of power but this has much less torque and that is a chrome Macan <laughs> oh my goodness you never know what you're gonna see out here in Los Angeles it's crazy sport mode beautiful M2 love to see it the crackles and pops announce that you have arrived, both financially and literally. I find myself driving this car weird just because I want to hear the pops. Unnecessary downshifts are the name of the game. You upshift just so you can downshift. how these windshield washer fluid things work. It feels like it's spraying the wrong direction. <laughs> With enough fluid, it gets the job done. Maybe they're aimed up, so that way, at 200 miles an hour, it hits the windscreen. Oh, man, oh man. Watching this thing put down power is really a thing of beauty. LA car culture is so weird because this car is both extreme and normal here. Like, it doesn't matter. Everybody has everything. There's Charlie Daily Motor in the ever potent SL63. yourself constantly keeping the revs up just for the noise. Let's go to Strata. And suddenly, it's a docile, I don't know if I would go so far as to say normal vehicle, but it's not as extreme as it just was. It's incredible how that flick of the switch with the valved exhaust can do so much work. is incredibly loud in most circumstances actually okay as a commuter I, I look I know this is not the hard-heading news you're looking for on the Lamborghini Huracan Technica but it works it's functional it's pretty nuts let's see if we can get a little ripski in the GT4 RS torque not to need a downshift man oh man best day ever <laughs> it's
it's all emotion. Numbers don't matter. Numbers just don't matter in a Lamborghini. When you get into an Aventador, the power literally doesn't matter. Even like the slower, slower, older Aventadors, they sound so good with those V12s. It doesn't matter if it's faster than anything because it sounds better than everything. And that is the aim of Lamborghini, to give you an experience like no other. The steering is genuinely relaxing and comfortable, yet it doesn't feel like it's trying to be anything. And I think we're gonna find out when we get out into the hills and we do our handling video and our real proper test drive. But in terms of like driving long distances, this isn't exhausting. I'm not chasing the car at all. There's a really good balance. Not only that, the brakes, they're right there. These carbon ceramics, just absolutely fantastic to get on and off appropriately. That Maserati MC20, a lot different than these brakes, I'll tell you that much. This bite instantly, but not so violently that it sends you through the windscreen. Whereas that MC20 back there behind me, you've got to put in about this much pedal input, and then you've got to really press hard. In strata mode, it does have auto start stop. It is really disconcerting when your V10 stops running because it's an Italian car and you feel like, holy cow, what has gone wrong? But just because the engine is off, it is still plenty hot. I can see the waves of heat coming off that rear end. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. This has rear wheel steering also. So it's pretty maneuverable and down here, it'll tell me the steering angle of the front and the rear in addition to some other metrics like my tire pressure and temperatures. SL63 is, my goodness, that has a lot of torque. We were only just slightly reeling him in. Oh my goodness. We've got tunnels coming up, which means windows down, earmuffs on. Let's rock and roll. Let's see what this TT4 RS has. <laughs> disappoints. Over the bumpy stuff, it's a little rough. Traction control stepping in. Very safe traction control, by the way. It does not let things get hairy, even in sport mode. If you turned everything off, I bet this thing would be an absolute riot to go sideways in. But as it sits right here, man, oh man. the ugly little bumps. I can feel everything, but I can feel it more through my butt than I can feel it through my fingertips. So the steering is still not perfect. It's not hydraulic. This is an electric power assisted steering system. Oh, good times. All right. Well, that is living with the Huracan Technica. I don't know if that gives you any insightful knowledge on consumer options in the market, but I hope you at least enjoyed it. I hope that you think maybe someday 
given the correct income, inheritance, or whatever finances come your way, this could be an option for you. And maybe, maybe for one or two of you, this is the video you've been waiting for. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm going to go make the hills scream with Lamborghini noises. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, this is some top gear stuff right here. Nose lift up. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe this is my life. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Three incredible mid-engine sports cars. That should do the trick. Shipped into P. P. There we go. And to get out, our beautiful carbon fiber doors. Yes. Wowzers. I didn't put my nose lift down because I'm a pleb, but look at this. Ah! What a life. What a life.